This right here is an SMX piston and rod. Used one right out of an engine. I'm gonna show you what kind of stresses this thing goes through. All right, so like I said, this thing is one of our piston and rod assemblies out of the SMX engine. And wanted to show you some of just one part of what is really going on in the engine. I already kind of went over with the uh, uh, the Ned Dunphy video on the SMX when that valve spring is broken and how fast things are all moving. And I thought, you know what, I got to do some math and figure out some things here because uh, we can have sometimes uh, problems and in particular, talking about maximum RPM. So maximum RPM, how it affects things, what is really going on, all right? So first thing we're gonna do is, in order to show you the math of what this thing's doing and going on, first we're gonna do some calculations on piston weight. So remember, this thing's sitting here going up and down, circling around. Everything that's going on right here is rotating where my finger's at. This is reciprocating, everything that makes the piston go up and down what this piston has to experience and what the connecting rod and piston pin experience is astronomical and exponentially increasing as rpm goes up so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out you need in order to do the math and i'm going to show you math i do not make math up i do not know enough about math i only know where to find some calculations and some programs and use math so it's not my equations, Somebody, some egghead guy that has no idea about engines but understands math and I'm just putting two things together. All right, so let's go through the first things first, which we need to weigh our piston, rings, pin, pin buttons if you have so, so that total reciprocating area, not including the piston, uh, I'm sorry, the connecting rod small end. All right, so let's see what you're gonna weigh. So first things first, this is what we're weighing. All right, one piston, one set of rings, one set of pin buttons, one piston pin. Now, uh, real quickly, piston pin stuff. Uh, this piston pin weighs 100, I think it's 172 grams. Um, it needs to weigh that much because uh, I'll t <laughs> you'll see why here in a minute. Uh, but uh, if they're not that heavy and they're not that big, they will bend, period. When they bend and they flex like this, then they break pistons. Uh, they will, well, technically, it's a lot of times they don't actually break the piston, but they will definitely wear out the small end of the rod when they bend and flex. Usually, actually, you got to really bend them, and they would be, like, permanently bent. Uh, you wouldn't be able to just take the piston pin in and out of a used piston if the pin was bent, all right? Uh, so these pins... Uh, do not bend unless it is seriously out of tune-up. So anyways, let's go through this and I'm gonna show you, first off, we're gonna weigh this stuff. All right, so piston, pin, rings, buttons are in there. This is our gram scale. That is 1,039 grams. We'll just round it off to 140. You know what, I can't remember if, uh, do, 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 units. Cause I need to actually do it in pounds. Oh, pounds right there. Sweet. That's the number we need. 2.51. So, in the SMX, now we could weigh up other pistons, do other stuff. Not a big deal. Um, on piston technology, can we make things lighter? That's what we're going to talk about. Yes. Will they last? Absolutely not. What good is having something that's lighter that creates less stress, but it breaks? <laughs> Can't do that. So, two, what was it? Two point... 2.51. 2.51 pounds is what this weighs. Now, let's go do some calculations. All right. Now, what we did is we just weighed this. We came up with it weighed 2.51 pounds. How much this weighs? So, what we're trying to calculate and what I'm trying to show you is how much when this piston comes up across all the way up. Don't worry about it being down here. It's when it comes up and is getting pulled back down at high RPM. How much does this piston really weigh? That's what the math is going to show us, and it's pretty fascinating. Now, there is two separate cycles that the piston comes up on. It comes up on an exhaust stroke, 
comes back down on the intake stroke, comes back up on compression. In that compression stroke, it then fires. So on the compression stroke cycle of the piston coming up, it's actually much easier because this piston is being cushioned and then actually starting to force its way down because of timing. Remember, we're sparking before top dead center. So top dead center, before here, we start sparking. It starts building a flame front and helping to push the piston down before it's even at top dead center. Not a lot, there's a balance there, okay? But it is helping it to cushion. On the exhaust stroke, when it's coming up on the exhaust, both valves are, end up being open up here because it's on the overlap cycle, okay? So it's pushing the exhaust open. The exhaust is starting to close right here. The intake valve is starting to open right here, so both are open. This has no restraint to it. It is just, whoop, I mean, just, whoop. and that's exact, exactly what it's trying to do. Let's go look at the math, and I'll show you what that 2.51 pounds actually weighs at different RPMs. Fascinating, and then you can see what the heck is going on and why over revving engines can be a real problem. All right, so like I said, I don't come up with math. I just use math and wanted to show you what the equation is. Where they come up with this number, I'm not exactly sure, but it's a legit number. Um, what we're going to do is 0.000142 times the weight of your piston, 2.51. Now here's where it is getting really crazy because it's times RPM squared. So RPM times RPM. So that's why you're seeing, so we'll figure this thing out at just uh, 7,500 RPM. So it's 7,500 RPM times 7,500 RPM, RPM squared, all right? So times 7,500 times 7,500. Then it's times our stroke. So the stroke matters too, all right? Now, times stroke, uh, we'll figure this out at, uh, we'll just base it on a 540, all right? So 4.25. What does that equal? That equals at 7,500 RPM. The math is showing us that we are at 8,520 pounds. That RPM. So remember how fast this is happening. Let's just show you another little bit of math here. Let me bring up another calculator. All right. So this is 8,520 pounds. So how many times is that piston going up and down in one second? This is why it's why it simulates that weight. <clears throat> How many times is that a second? So 7,500 RPM divided by 60 gets a second divided by 2 is how many times, uh, let's see, RPM cy uh, cycle stroke. No, that's actually the valve. My bad. Let me do that again. That is 7,500 RPM. How many times this thing goes up and down divided by 60? 125 times a second. Amazing. 1001. It went up and down. That two and a half pound piston went up and down 125 times. Crazy. Now, let's run the math here. Let's say, all right, our normal RPM max is 90. Uh, 9,000, all right? Let's say 9,000. So at 9,000 RPM divided by 60, 150 times in a second. Let's run the math here on how much more it adds to that piston weight. We'll clear. We will go 0. 0.0000. I got to get my number again here, sorry. 0, 0, 0, 0. 142 and that is times 2.51 times 9,000 times 9,000 
times 4.25 our stroke. Whoop. That is not correct. Let me see here. It must have done something wrong. 0. 0.0000142 times 2.51 times 9,000 times 9,000 times 4.25. There we go. This is one decimal point off. That 8,500 pounds turned into 12,269 pounds. Raising our RPM up 1,500 RPM. Overshooting, you know, maybe you could say. 12,296 pounds is what that piston simulates weighing. Now, this is just straight math. I'll show you that when we go back out there to the piston because remember what I was talking about. That would be... Um, th because there is, to, to complicate it further, this is the simple equation on movement. The connecting rod length does change it just slightly. And it makes it, uh, it, makes it uh, actually a little bit higher in one portion of the, the sweep. But we're just going to stick with straight out numbers just to keep things simple, okay? But connecting rod ratio does change it more minimally than what you think it does. It's pretty inter That's a little interesting too. But that's 12,000. So now let's go back and let's say this thing is now going to be uh, 10,000 RPM. Point zero 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 one four two times 2.51 times 10,000 RPM. So you have hit the rev limiter, all right? 10,000 RPM times 4.25 15,147 pounds is what that connecting rod is trying to pull back down the piston going 100 well uh, 150 150 there let's see how many times a second at 10,000 10,000 rpm 10,000 rpm divided by 60 166 times a second. 166 times a second is throwing this two and a half pound weight straight up and trying to pull it back down. Okay? On that exhaust stroke was the one that we're talking about. Now imagine if this thing is on the rev limiter. Banging, misfiring. Doesn't make the second cycle where it's got compression and where it has cylinder fill trying to push it back down. So then every single stroke is at this 15,000 pounds and possibly even probably worse if something else is shaking moving doing something engine dynamics what whatever could be happening there absolutely astronomical but you would never think that that pit connecting rod is trying to pull down 15,000 pounds it's it's amazing so let's go back out there and look at it real quick that is the math that is just simple math of uh, inertia of the piston, what the piston ends up weighing, it's inertia weight. All right, we just showed you the math of what's going on. Remember, we talked about that cycle where this piston, can you imagine this thing going up and down 166 times a second? It's amazing what goes on inside an engine. Now, Remember, that exhaust cycle, when both valves are open here, the both two valves are open, there is nothing to try to cushion or push the piston down. That is the critical stroke. That's the problem. Uh, the second one has at least fire, you know, compression and uh, combustion pushing the piston back down slightly. So it's a much softer cycle. If you do a you know, cylinder cuts or any kind of RPM limiting factor while you're up there, uh, it does some serious damage. I will tell you right now, if you talk to any pro mod guy worth his salt in anything, especially blower guys, when they over rev an engine, if they hit the rev limiter, they come back to the pits, they take all the pistons and rods out of it, and they put new rods in them. Or they will break, no matter what rod it is, the rod will break the next pass, normally. Ask any pro modified, legit pro modified guy, I'm not talking about your your grandma that's got a seven second pro mod car. I'm talking about a legit uh, three and a half second eighth mile or uh, five and a half second 540 in the quarter mile. <laughs> Something that is really honking. 
and really making a lot of RPM and a lot of steam. Okay, so just imagine all that. Now, let's talk about this piston. So I was like, well, then you got to, we really got to work on the lighter piston. Okay, very good. No problem. I wish we could come up with a very light piston because, A, it would, ro it would accelerate faster. There is no doubt. It's going to rotate. It's not moving all this weight. It has to, just by physics, it would have to move faster, accelerate faster. That's what our game is all about, right? Um, problem being is, remember, we're talking about this compression and combustion cycle where uh, cylinder pressure, I will probably can go over a video of that at some point in time because um, that number is a little bit harder to come up with. Um, I don't know the math off the top of my head, but... Um, it is not as uh, the inertia weight is different than what that cylinder pressure pushing down is. All right, it's a different type of force. Um, but the problem with trying to lighten up these pistons, let's, let's say we're trying to lighten them up. Uh, and where are you going to lighten it up? You're going to lighten it up up here in the top of the piston, this whole area up here. No, you blow a hole right through it. You're going to lighten it up by making a whole lot less skirt, maybe making this a slipper skirt design where it's a forged side relief. Possible, possible. I'd like to try to play with the side, forged side relief pistons because I think there could be a little bit of... Uh, I'm looking at it from a strength standpoint. I wasn't really concerned about the weight. Um, possible, you might lose a little bit there. Maybe you're going to thin some things up here. Anywhere that you're going to thin this piston up at, has the potential of all that cylinder pressure when this thing's making 4,500 horsepower, 4,000 horsepower, whatever it may be there, of just destroying stuff, just literally whoa, folding things over. It's like we're going to put that lightweight pin in there. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> you put a lightweight pin in this thing, and this thing doesn't make it past 2,000 horsepower because the pins go whoa, bend like this, and it just breaks and blows everything apart. Okay, you're not. You have to have these type materials. You have to have this type of weight in order to keep it alive under the power stroke. And you're having to sacrifice and always remember what's happening on the exhaust stroke. So there's a lot going on in these engines. And I thought I would give you the math and show you and uh, help you guys understand what goes on when you hit rev limiters at the top. I tell every one of my customers that has one of these engines. If you hit the rev limiter on the high side, I'm not talking about two step checks, that doesn't mean squat. I'm talking about hitting the rev limiter at eight, uh, 9,500, 10,000 RPM, I mean going way over shooting stuff. Um, or even if you have your limiter turned down accidentally, let's say you have your, your rev limiter turned down to 9,000 RPM and you were supposed to be at 9,500. It just going out there and hitting it is bad enough. Um, the free, fl uh, the free wheeling rev limiter hit is just catastrophic where it just spins the tire and wing and just zings up and it just way overshoots that is catastrophic that is you had better take off 20 pa at that pass at minimum is the equivalent of 20 plus passes minimum and the blower like i said the blower pro mod guys they don't even waste time trying to risk it they just say nope just put a new set of rods in it right now and that's exactly what they do so, good information. Uh, tell me if you guys like this kind of information. If you want me to do more videos like this, some real good tech stuff, explaining some math and how things, what things really are going on, like this piston going up and down four and a half or four and a quarter inches. It's 166 times a second. It is mind-boggling. Doesn't even make sense half the time to me to tell you the truth it's it's amazing and i work on this all the time every day but um still amazes me but that is what we are going through and that's why when you have piston problems or if you have connecting rod problems or just engine problems in general horsepower weights all this stuff is all things you have to take in consideration add together figure out um break fix repair redesign re-engineer try to figure out how to keep things from living um, remember, one, one of my mottos is making horsepower is easy. Keeping things alive is not. So always remember that. And uh, like, uh, subscribe, and make sure that you hit your notifications. Make sure you're 
you are subscribed if you you are but maybe you're not and uh make sure you share this stuff if it's something you find is interesting and leave me a comment i do read comments and uh if you'd like to see more stuff like this i am steve morris steve morris engines have a fantastic day